Hey there, it's Wisconsin Wine Guy, and I am back with another wine review. And as you can see, it's another Bogle wine. You know, I did the, what is it, Heritage Blend earlier, and now I'm doing the Chardonnay. Now, I've, I've done reviews with some of the Chardonnays from uh, the Bogle line, you know, and uh, I wanted to do this one because it is a 2023. All right, release date on this, I've looked it up, was December 2023. You know, so it's not even a year old yet, but it's definitely the latest and the newest release on the market. You know, so I wanted to try that. I think I'll add links to the others, but I believe I did uh, 2020, uh, 2019, or 18 of the Chardonnay before. But uh, we got 2023 here. I couldn't pass on it, right? But that being said, for those who are new, we'll get back to the wine. These are wines where you can... Pick up wherever you shop for wine, liquor store, grocery store, and some wine shops. These wines are readily available. I like to call these everyday drinking wines. You know, these are wines that you can just, you know, go pick up, take it to a party, and enjoy it. Or have an impromptu party, pick up a few bottles of wine. These are everyday drinking wines. And I go through and taste these wines, different brands, different uh, varietals, and give you my personal opinion, what I think about these wines. Utilizing the infamous thumb rating system. Thumbs up says, I recommend that wine. It's a pretty solid wine. It's a very good value wine for everyday drinking. Three quarters says, you know what? I had this wine at a party. I never had it before. Or a friend gave me this as a gift and I liked it. Or I shared it with some friends or some friends shared it with me, I should say. And I said, you know what? I'm going to keep a couple of these bottles on hand you know, because this is pretty good. This is definitely an everyday go-to drinking wine. You know, no nonsense, just get straight to the point, drink some wine. That would be three quarters. Halfway, something about that wine was off for my palate. Doesn't make it a bad wine, it just didn't work for my palate. Thumbs down. I just throw my hands in the air on that one, right? <laughs> I don't even really say anything else about that. Every now and then, there's the infamous double thumbs up, right? Double thumbs up means that that wine is exceptional. It's an exceptional value for everyday drinking. In fact, it's a wine that you probably can sit on and just let it rest, you know, for the next 10, 15, or 20 years and see what happens, which is like to do with some of my wines. Have you been following my wine purchase? All right. So now, let's get to it. The Bogo family wine has been around since the 60s, late 60s. You know, uh, sixth generation of winemakers on this one now. Uh, the Chardonnay coming out of uh, Clarksburg, California, outside of Sacramento. You know, so we're talking, or within the Sacramento area, we're talking about, you know, a lot warmer, a lot hotter. So a lot more ripe fruit in the Sacramento area. Okay, they are green certified, you know, so sustainable farm. like this bottle. We come in alcohol of 14%. You know, 14% like you're like, wow, that's pretty high. But we're talking about, you know, very ripe fruit, you know, probably high sugar, you know, the bricks, but probably high sugar at the time that uh, they picked the grapes, you know, was going to produce high alcohol, right? But doesn't necessarily mean that wine itself is going to be hot. In the hands of a very good winemaker, that's going to be a nice balance to the wine. And that's what we're hoping for in the 2023. Okay, so this is a 2023 Boga Family Vineyards, you know, sixth generation. You know, I've always been a fan of the Bogo wines. Haley's Corker. Always been a fan of the Bogo wines. I think these are wines that are possibly underrated for everyday drinking wines, okay? And I encourage you to uh, give them another look if you haven't drank the Bogle wine in quite some time. Uh, they come into fame or come to their own with Petit Syrah, rounded out with Zinfandel. You know, now they have the the uh, Cabernets and Merlots, they have the Chardonnays, you know, they have the Pinot Grigios, you know, but they, their claim to fame was Petit Syrah. You know, one of the few that primarily focus on Petit Syrah. And in the area where it's grown, you know, the Petit Syrah is going to be get nice and ripe tasting, just like the uh, Cabernet or just like the Zinfandel. It's going to be nice and ripe, you know, giving you a nice uh, presence of fruit, but big, bold, lush uh, tasting wines. So, I've always been a fan of the Vogel wines and Retail on sale in my market, you know, the past weekend, retail was $6.99, $7.99 on sale. You know, but you can find this if you find it on sale between $6.99, $7.99, or regular retail $10.99 to $14.99, or $13, $14 or $13.99, depending on your market. Okay? So let's give this a nose and a taste. So this is, can you a little bit about the wine? So this is a, I like how a lot of wineries are 
doing this these days. And some have been doing it for, for the entire time. It's just that you just never paid attention to it, all right? How they ferment part of the wine in the barrel and ferment the other part of the wine, maybe half and half, you know, depending on the percentages of what they want the outcome to be. The other part of the wine is fermented in stainless steel. In this case, 50-50. 50, 50. 50 barrel fermented, 50 stainless steel fermented. Okay, it's also uh, mallow, yes. Okay, fallow, yes, you know, to round out some of those rough edges in the barrel. In addition to in the barrel, it is surly, meaning it is stirred on the lees, the spent yeast and things like that, the byproducts, you know, just give it a little bit more structure, a little bit more body, complexity to it. You know, and this is spins, um, well, we got eight months in uh, American oak. Okay, so looking forward to trying this and see, I don't know what I said about the previous vintages, but... Uh, I'll go back and look at that and I'll attach it to the video so you can see yourself what I thought about the previous vintages compared to the 2023. This is young, baby. And you know, I find that, you know, when they do that 50 50, you know, maintain some of this ripe, fruity, uh, uh, youth characteristics, and then that barrel aging, you know, fermentation to give that complexity. The combination of the two, you know, should give you a really good balance. You know, not the overly oaky, buttery type thing. Okay? So here we go. On the nose. I want to know is you definitely pick up some of that lemon zest, lemon lime zest. Sort of hints of vanilla and smoke. Ah, wow. So definitely nice nose. For me, a nice nose. Ah, wow. You know, even a little bit, a little bit tropical here on the nose. You know, more like a a, if you ever had a grilled pineapple, you know, just the smell of that, that, that pineapple on the grill, you, you pick up that, I pick up that here myself. Now, two-step process on the taste, you know how we do it, acidity. No acidity, no play. I don't care how much the wine costs, I don't care how old or how young it is, if there's no acidity, no play. I might as well drink water. <laughs> so here we go. Nice acidity, nice acidity, okay? And because I the type of rinse I do, I get just like a kiss of tannins here, okay? But I get this nicely chilled. I wish I had a little bit warmer, but nicely chilled. Not overly chilled, but just had a good temperature chill. Oh, I wish I had my thermometer so I could see what the temperature was on it. So here we go. I would say, let's see it, cheek test. I would say this is probably at about 55, 60 on cheek test, my cheek. So now, here we go for the taste. I would like to taste this at 65, see what 65, 67, see what it's like. Ah, here we go. Now. Pineapple. Lemon. And I'm talking about the pulp of the lemon. I gotta get some more of this. The pulp of the lemon. You know, a lemon can be very tart, but you get that that very quick burst. If you bite into the pulp, the actual pulp itself, you get a very quick burst of sweetness, a little bit of sweetness that exists there before it goes tart on you. That's what I get here when it comes to talk about the lemon. But definitely that pineapple. You know, uh, on the taste, just like on the nose, very clean, clean tasting, refreshing. You know, and that's at a that's at a chill temperature. You know, very crisp. Also, you know, I think it was a great combination doing that 50-50 and then doing a final blend with the two because it maintains that those fresh qualities. But also still gives you some complexity. So as this wine will begin to warm up, it probably become a little bit more fuller, a little bit more complex. But it has like you know subtle complexities now. You know being you know slightly chill. Mm. Get a little bit of pear notes to it. Okay, 
So again, as it warms up, what I did that rinse in my mouth the last time, I, I get it's warming up. You get a lot more density of fruit coming here. The little apple, the little pear, the little lemon. You get more uh, density of fruit. So now, at 14%, I'm not feeling it. Okay, I'm not feeling it as far as a burn goes. But if I drink this bottle or even a half of the bottle, I will feel 14. Was it 14 and a half? No, 14. I would feel 14%. But on the taste itself, there is no alcohol burn here. Very nicely balanced. I find on my palate, can't wait to try this with food. So it's your Wisconsin wine guy saying, as always, let your palate be the guide. Oh, I didn't rate it, huh? <laughs> I guess the 14% is kicking in already. <laughs> so, Wisconsin wine guy is going to rate this at a thumbs up, okay? Thumbs up for the Chardonnay. It was a very tasty Chardonnay. Uh, nicely chilled. I think it works wonders. Okay? Not overly chilled, but it's the right temperature chill. I think it's going to be great with food. Uh, as it begins to warm up on my palate, that density of fruit, for me, can be a bit much. But I still think it's a pretty solid tasting Chardonnay at 50-50 on its fermentation. Yep, so there you have it. Wisconsin Wine Guy, thumbs up from the 2023. I need to find another bottle and just sit on it and see what happens. I'm going to do that. And probably be my purge 10 years from now if I'm blessed to be here in 2033. That would be my 2033 purge. It's your Wisconsin Wine Guys. Thank you as always. Let your family be the guide when selecting your wine. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.